Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Alex, and we have the patch notes for the Emma Frost update. And yes, this is going to be a rolling patch. So this is technically the second mid-month update in a row. We're getting back-to-back mid-month updates. And this one will be applied in waves starting on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. PST, which is 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. So about uh 14 hours after the drop of this video if you're watching this video right when it goes live and thank you if you are that is when the update will start rolling out the good news is that since this is just a rolling patch there will be no maintenance no downtime and generally speaking the last few months the devs have been earlier than usual with these rolling patches i believe we got the last one at like 9 p.m or 9 30 p.m for eastern time for my time so this is pretty nice however what this means is that this is generally speaking and spoiler alert you know summary this is a small update a very small patch and the full the next full update the next full patch with maintenance is now scheduled for february so for those of you i just want to sort of discuss this ahead of time for those of you that were hoping that we would start seeing sneak peeks at the end of this week and that the next full update would be at the end of january that is not the case it seems like we can peg february 2nd for the full update uh, time timeline. So yeah, anywho, let's jump into the Emma Frost uniform Hellfire Gala edition. She's going back to, or you know, back to her roots to being a superhero. She's only a villain with the Phoenix Five uniform. However, her allegiance in the comics has switched a lot more than it has in the game. As far as her uniform and the changes they've made, hopefully they've made sweeping changes you know from skill one to five. They've also changed both of her passives, and it seems like they are leaning pretty heavily towards a pvp build or a pvp encouraged build for emma frost but there are some key factors that could make her a very good dual character you know good for pvp and pv of course the jury is out until we actually get to play the character tonight and if you want to see that live right if you want to get your hands on the character right away but you don't have the crystals twitch.tv slash cynic alex i'll be jumping in right away i'll be checking her out and i may also be tier threeing her on the spot so do not miss that. It's going to be very hype. Now, as far as the uniform effect goes, she gets 20% energy attack, and she also gets a 50% chance when attacking to just incapacitate for 10 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. That's pretty bad. That's not a very good uniform effect, but that's okay because the rest of her passives are much better. Her mind cloaking passive now gives her guaranteed dodge, skill damage, bonus damage, and 40% HP, and that's her tier one passive. And then her tier two passive gives her a passive 60 percent chance to penetrate so this is huge seeing this change to an existing crystal wall character normally speaking and it doesn't matter too much for the sake of the reality of the gameplay because most characters now for pvp have a skill that gives them penetration you know at least a 50 60 percent penetration and they use that skill first or second on autoplay however generally speaking over the years the auto chance to penetrate basically a passive ability that just gives you penetration all the time with no cooldown with no skill attached to it has been reserved for native tier twos like world bosses we first saw it we saw the very first instance of this with characters like quicksilver and scarlet witch and cable who have a passive ability to just penetrate and then we got strife we got you know dr doom tons of other characters came later and again for the reality of the gameplay it doesn't matter so much because sentry has penetration on his fifth skill and sentry in pvp spams his fifth skill so it's sort of you know the, the difference between sentry's penetration and dr doom's penetration is not that big of a difference i don't want to stress this too much but it's cool to see that they're adding this retroactively not retroactively but they're adding this now in a, in a retroactive way two tier one characters that's all i want to say about that uh then she has a 100 mind damage immunity which is very interesting because she deals uh almost exclusively mind damage it seems so it, you might have a hilarious uh <laughs> deadlock uh when you have uh, emma frost versus emma frost also emma frost versus who is it that deals mind damage in pvp right now um not psylocke mr sinister perhaps anywho we'll have to wait and see uh, and then she has increased mind damage by 50 percent so stuff like this this increased mind damage by 50 percent. this is very good for pve and we'll see a few more hints of this so she's got mind blast as her first skill here which is a it's the same name as her old first skill so that one might be exactly the same it also has a very similar cooldown and a similar percentage but then I think from the from the second skill onward, we have four brand new skills here. 
So she gets uh, two seconds of immunity here, which is kind of cool because it's a short cooldown. But then here we go on the third skill, so it's getting pretty spicy. She has ignore iframe. We know that's always meta for PvP. And she has super armor, all defense, and decreases basic damage received. So they're bringing back the sort of diamond form that we were hoping to see. It's called diamond barrier. But here's the better part. It also accumulates true damage dealt. And the 0.5% increase is not that amazing. We were maybe hoping for more, but the fact that it's damage dealt and not damage received means it can have a very good impact in PvE. It also does give her a 30% attack buff for 10 seconds. So pretty nice buffs there. Her fourth skill has paralysis, all defense down and three seconds of invincibility. Note the very short cooldown should be very good for PvP. You know, every five and a half seconds, you can spam an, an ability that gives you invincibility. Remember, invincibility always gives you super armor. So you're starting to see the PvP value here, but also the PvE value. She's not going to get knocked back by null, etc. And then the fifth skill, absolute domination. If you ever wanted to be dominated by a buxom blonde, why are you watching my YouTube videos? No, I'm just kidding. Um, she's got <laughs> she's got bind, silence, charm, mind control, damage, de damage received increased. This is not going to apply to world boss legend, but it will apply to world boss ultimate. Then she has mind resistance down and she has a 30% heal and she has a frenzy buff. All that on a very juicy seven and a half second cooldown when you have maximum skill cooldown on your build. So she's pretty much got everything besides a revive and reflect. <laughs> but wait for that last one. Let's check out her tier three here. This is her tier three skill. She mind controls you, then she flies up into the sky, throws a bunch of um, diamonds at you, I guess, and then the diamonds explode. It's actually a really gorgeous animation. It looks pretty similar to like Cyclops's tier three and then a couple of other characters who just fly up and blast down, but I really like it. I think the diamond aspect of Emma Frost is what makes her so unique. Very few, if any other characters in the Marvel Universe, use diamonds as part of their abilities and sort of their look. And I actually believe during the animation, at the end, she turns diamond for a brief second. Mm, there she, oh, she, she turns diamond and then she crashes into you. That's pretty cool. I like that. Personally, I like that. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a sucker for, for diamonds. That sounds, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not into diamonds. I don't buy diamonds, guys. It's diamonds have inflated value they don't actually they're not actually okay anyways we're not gonna get listen if you want to get into diamonds we could talk about it on twitch okay uh as far as the skill effect goes she's got ignore dodge on her tier three invincibility remove debuffs she's got another frenzy buff for 20 seconds and she's got a double damage proc diamond wave i don't know man looking kind of nice for emma frost here looking kind of nice now remember when i said she doesn't have revive or reflect well take a look at her new artifact Ladies and gentlemen, a brand new effect that we've never before seen on an artifact for the very first time. We've seen this on abilities for characters, for passives like Silver Surfer, but not on an artifact. Her artifact gives her 35% reflect of basic damage received. Now, 35% is not that big. However, take note of this, regardless of the attacker's defense effects. So... I don't want to read too much into that. The testing will have to be done. I, I don't really want to pay the $140 to test it, but I might. However, some people are speculating that this, this second line here, regardless of the attacker's defense effects, this may refer to characters like Mephisto, who can reduce the amount of incoming reflect, or it may uh, just refer to the generic damage reduction that may apply to other characters' reflects that will uncharacteristically not apply to hers. Now, taking a look at someone like Silver Surfer, reflects 25% of damage received, 25% of max attack. So hers, her reflect is actually going to be more than twice as good as Silver Surfer's. That's pretty crazy if you think about it because so when I say it's two, twice as good, it's still more than twice as good. So it ref so for her six-star artifact, keep in mind, the four-star artifact is going to be lower. But for the six-star artifact, it's reflecting 35% instead of Silver Surfer's 25%. So that's already 10% higher. But take a look here. It's 50% of her max attack. That's a very important thing to remember because Reflect is capped at your characters, at, at a percentage of your character's maximum attack stat. 
So his is capped at 25% of his max attack. So in my case, my Silver Surfer has 58,000 energy attack. So I'm only going to be able to reflect a maximum of like, what, 13,000 damage uh, per hit. So we're going to multiply that by 0.25. 14,500. So even if silver, even if silver surfer, my silver surfer is being hit with attacks that deal more than 14,500 damage per hit, he will only be able to reflect back 14,500 uh, of that damage. Now that can be augmented by some of his frenzy buffs. Like he's got a frenzy buff here with a 40%. So, you know, the, the numbers will get bigger. They will get larger. Um, but it, the reflect has nothing to do with your max HP or your damage reduction. It's just a, a percentage. It expresses a percentage of your attack. And you can see that with all reflects. You can see here, Colossus reflects 100% of the damage he receives. So the, the damage he receives is not calculated down, but it's still capped by 150% of his max attack. So if you, again, 150% of his max attack means that the max amount he, this, my Colossus can reflect without c calculating buffs is 70,500. That's a lot more than Silver Surfers. That's like four or five times more than Silver Surfers. But again, it's capped as a percentage relative to your uh, attack stat. That's how reflect works on all characters. However, as you can see there, his reflect does not say that it ignores the the attacker's defense effects and i don't believe any other reflect that we've seen in the game says that i'm i'm, bit, I'm drawing a blank at the moment for recent characters besides um uh, colossus that have reflect but you can sort of get the point of what i'm trying to say if this is if this is indeed new this should be very interesting she may be able to reflect a very solid amount of damage and she could become a very good uh, character because of that reflect is very powerful in pvp and with her damage mitigation it could be very interesting so yeah that's that for uh, emma frost we're also getting the hellfire gala uniform collection now that we have all four of the characters uh, and then we are getting a buff to mr sinister so mr sinister's fourth skill is going to have an added effect as you can see right here at the moment his fourth skill does uh, just the frenzy buff with the paralysis and the incapacitation and the three seconds of immunity. They're adding an additional effect, which is going to give him penetration. 50% chance to penetrate super armor, barrier, shield, immune, invincibility. This is very good because it means that for PvP, you do not have to sacrifice a defensive build with a, with a regen or an authority in favor of a destruction in order to get penetration. Because otherwise, he has he had zero penetration on his ability so they are leaning more into the pvp build for mr sinister and this should make him a, quite a bit better we'll have to see they're also addressing the fact that myself and other content creators pointed out his ai rotation was was garbage mr sinister has been improved to use the awakening skill by priority when auto progressing pvp content so clearly somewhere in their uh rework for this character somewhere in the code of the game they had accidentally encouraged the AI to ignore the awakening skill. Perhaps they just had not, you know, there was a line of code where the AI didn't realize that it had the awakening skill. Like it still thought it was a tier two character. So it was ignoring to, to look for and check for a sixth skill. But um, maybe the eternal optimist in me is hoping that this means we could get custom skill rotations for Alliance Conquest. So maybe I can start playing that game mode finally. Who knows, man? Who knows? Maybe in 2022 after... What is that, six years of Alliance Conquest? Six freaking years, wow. Anywho, we've been asking for that for six years. Uh, and then some game error fixes with uh, text in Alliance Conquest, uh, text in Super Armor, and that's it. So that's it for the update. Very small update that I found a way to talk for 12 minutes about. However, I just wanna briefly point out that there are a lot of events going on uh, with this update. And then this is pretty unique because we don't get these events overlapping that often. So I think this is an important thing to mention, and thank you for watching this far in the video. So we're gonna have an all uniform sale. It's not just going to be Emma Frost's uniform and her um, uniform uh, options. It's gonna be all uniforms in the game, except for the uniforms that you can't normally buy, like the seasonal uniforms, whatever. And if you notice here, actually no, this, this is gonna end on uh, January 25th. However, 
So we have a 40% uh, off on all uniforms, okay? I know Black Friday's 50% off. I know. But anyways, bear with me here. We've got a faction war, faction battle, where you're going to be able to get X-Gene materials and energy, 700 energy. So it'd be a great time to put that energy towards an epic quest like Cersei's. We're also getting a six-star rank up ticket for free. So you can calculate that into your builds for characters and stuff. Anywho. Um, and then here's the interesting thing. Well, the Emma Frost unlock thing is whatever. Uh, Emma Frost growth thing. We're getting a crystal bonus mission. And this is what I mean by overlapping events. It's very, very rare in Marvel Future Fight that we get a crystal bonus mission and an all uniform sale at the same time. So if you're the type of player that didn't get to spend crystals during Black Friday or you have a lot of crystals now and you're trying to get a lot of uniforms, it's a great time to double dip, right? You buy a few uniforms and you get a bunch of free rewards on top of that that you wouldn't normally get when you're buying uniforms at the 40% discount. And this is the this is the sort of better um, crystal bonus event mission because it gives you the mega uniform or the mega, excuse me, the mega rank up ticket at 9,000, the mythic upgrade ticket at 10, and then the Titan selectors at 11 and 12. So that is really good. Not saying you have to spend crystals, just pointing out there's extra value to be had here than there usually is during an all uniform sale. We also have event world boss where you get um, mutant materials, you know, Phoenix feathers, Mcron crystals, Mcron shards um, by spending energy. So don't miss that. It's going to be in the main menu over here where all these scrollables are. You'll be able to find them. You'll be able to fight them. So that's going to be a really good source. You want to farm those to then turn them into cards if you're not with the crafting, if you're not using them to build up mutants. And then we have a ranking event for Emma Frost and we got some free stuff and we got an Uru combine and Odin's blessing chance up. So yeah. That's what I wanted to say about the Emma Frost update. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit sweeter now that we know we're getting all these events and we're getting that overlap and we're getting the all uniform sale. I know a lot of people were hoping for an all uniform sale because it's been over a month. But uh, the other thing I want to point out here is that's that was the last thing I wanted to point out that some of these events end on February 2nd. So that is why you can see here February 2nd. That is why most people are jumping to the conclusion because this hero growth bonus mission doesn't end until February, February 1st, actually. Uh, the, the chances of there being an update between now and then are very, very slim. Usually the hero growth missions uh, are sort of from the beginning of an update to the end of an update to, to signal the beginning of a new update. So, yeah. Anywho, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Emma Frost, the reworks, and all the events. And I'll see you guys tonight on Twitch.tv slash Thank you so, so much for watching. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.